So one of the hardest questions to answer is how much pressure is needed on that quick release lever? Uh, everybody's strength is different, everyone's pain tolerance is different, the feel is different. So unless you have a little bit of prior experience or someone to physically show you what it feels like, um, I'll do my best to try and explain that. <laughs> Right now this skewer, this lever is almost in line with this fork, so it's gonna be hard for me to get my fingers in there and open it. If it's very easy to open in this difficult position, then most likely there's not enough pressure on this lever, so I'm gonna give it a try. Yeah, this one's pretty tough. I could barely get my fingertips. It actually has some little lines in my finger. So with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and use a flathead screwdriver here. Um, I really try and avoid using tools for this situation. If you do, be very careful because you're gonna be applying pressure on the lever and on the fork leg itself. So you could scratch or possibly nick up your sticker, your paint, uh, chip your paint, something like that. But I'm gonna be very gentle. I'm gonna stick the tip in there and just give it a, a gentle twist. And then maybe that'll give me some more space. There we go. So I was able to get the fingers in there and open it up a little bit more. So overall, the pressure may be okay, but it's just in a very poor position where I cannot get my, a good grip on it with my fingers. So I'm gonna open this up, and I'm gonna go ahead and turn this slightly. So when I do close it, it's gonna be more straight up and down away from your, your fork, or if it's for the rear, it's gonna be away from any part of the frame. And I'm gonna go ahead and use some pressure. I'm going to use the palm of my hand and you might hear some people say, well, it should leave a little indentation, a slight mark in your palm. Of course, you don't want to be hurting yourself. You shouldn't be uh, looking for pain when doing this, but a little mark in here uh, that's going to leave a, a sign letting you know, like that pressure is okay right there. It left a little dent in my, my palm. I felt some pressure. It hurt maybe on a little bit on a scale of one to five, maybe it was a one or a two. You know, you shouldn't you have to go too crazy. So if you're really forcing this, putting a lot of pressure, trying to close this all the way, you're more or less trying to get up in a, in a vertical position. If you're struggling to do that, it's gonna be twice as hard to open it. So keep that in mind. So go ahead and test it, open it back up. This one opens pretty good. And this one does have an open sign here, closed sign on the, on the backside. So again, this is gonna be trial and error. You're gonna close it, you're gonna open it a few times, making sure that you do get this closed pretty much all the way coming up into the vertical, pushing close. It should get not too close to the spokes, but it may look like it's getting close. So every skewer might be a little bit different where it's gonna, the stopping point maybe. Um, so it's, it's just up to you. If you have a low threshold for pain, then you might have somebody else do this for you and then you can feel what, what it should feel like. Um, you do wanna feel, a, you wanna, struggle a little bit, but not a lot. So you gotta find that happy medium where it's not too hard to close, therefore it's not gonna be too hard to open, but also we don't wanna you know, sneeze or you know, hit a bump and that lever flips open because it's so loose. So again, with this front fork, it has a little safety tabs on it. It should uh, help you out and let you know that if this opens, your wheel will just kinda jiggle a little bit, even if your brakes are open. So I'm just opening these brakes here. Now all that's holding it, this is open, a quick release for the brakes are open, but the wheel's still in place. So we have the little safety tabs on the fork, very common, that will hold the wheel in place. Hopefully you hear or feel that the wheel's shaking. Stop, pull over, see what's going on. Readjust this guy if you need to. So after you find your proper pressure here for your lever, I'm holding the wheel upward, pressure pulling upward. I'm gonna give this guy a close. Boom. If you don't get this right the first time, that's okay. You're either working in a stand like I am. I know that this wheel is not gonna be perfectly straight. So I'm gonna have to bring the bike down to do a test. Um, or the bike's flipped upside down maybe, then you put the wheel in. Um, gravity probably helps that way too, as long as there's nothing obstructing the wheel, the wheel's gonna sit perfectly in these two dropouts evenly. It's not gonna sit crooked, tilting left or tilting right. But when in doubt, we're gonna go ahead and bring the bike down to the ground and use gravity that way. So with the wheel, with the bike standing straight up and down, we're using the weight of the bike. We're gonna go ahead and open up that lever and without touching the wheel, a lot of times as soon as you open that lever, the wheel, you might see that wheel straighten up because it was maybe a little bit over to the left or to the right. Now, if you don't hear or see anything, go ahead and tap the top of the wheel, give it a good tap. 
if you're trying to wake a drunk person up. Give it a tap and it will dislodge and hopefully center itself. You can take a look here, make sure it doesn't look completely uneven. A couple taps should do that. Go ahead and reclose this guy. And if you still need to make an adjustment here, you can practice trying to lean the bike on yourself because you don't want to put any pressure on the wheel. You don't want to have that wheel go crooked again. So I'm going to lean the bike on me trying to keep the bike straight as possible. It does want to roll away. So it's going to take a little bit of practice. So I'm putting my knee up on the fork here. The grip over here is in my hip. So I'm still holding the bike as straight as possible. Not off to the left or to the right. I'm going to go ahead and open up that skewer. Give that wheel a tap. That bike is still nice and straight. No pressure on the wheel from me. And then go ahead and give it a close. If it's too tight, open it up, loosen it up a quarter turn, tighten it up again. Boom, we're good to go. What's up, Pagara? So this is a nine millimeter skewer, typical skewer with a quick release lever. Um, you're gonna find these on uh, not just lower end bikes, but maybe older bikes, you know, 70s, 80s, 90s. Um, maybe early 2000, mid 2000s, we started going more through axle. Um, it's real skinny in the middle. Got a little lever here, and these can vary, you know, per per look. Um, usually, you got an end cap, and then you got two coiled two coiled springs there, and they are cone shaped, so they're kind of pointy on one side and wide on the other. Now, these two coil springs, they're meant to help you center the skewer just automatically. It's putting pressure on it, so it's it's going to be centered right in the middle, not off to one side, the left or the right. So um, these, if you do end end up taking this end cap off, they will slide off of the the whole skewer, and they hit the floor and they take off running. So uh, if that happens and you're luckily you get to find them, when you go to put them back on, the two pointy ends, which is the tops here, they're going to be pointing towards each other. So they'll be doing something just like that. So when they do go back on here, you're going to have them pointing towards each other. So this is going to slide on there and then that will slide on on there. So we got two, two ends pointing close towards each other and then this end cap goes on just like that. So if you do lose these, not a huge deal. It's just more of a convenience if you do have them to help center this left and right. Otherwise, you'll have to manually center this as you're trying to put the wheel back into the dropouts. And then on the inside here, so this would be closed position on this particular one. This is a Shimano. It does say closed here. Actually, that would be the correct side. So closed, and then you would flip this. That's halfway open. Boom, that's full way open. So on the inside here, it actually says, open. These do have to be positioned the correct way. If you do have these backwards, if you have one uh, flipped the other direction or two, at least one of them, you will have an issue putting the wheel back on because this will get in the way of where the hub or the wheel space is supposed to go. This bigger end will take up that space that you need. So make sure if you're having issues getting your wheel on or it doesn't want to close correctly, take a look at your, your springs. These two little guys can cause a big problem.